What's up guys, Sio Fantasia here with another Allegro tutorial. Uh, in the previous video I uh, explained um, comprehensively what the game loop was, um, its components, the logic and the drawing, and how they operate in order to create what you and I perceive as a video game. Um, in this video what I wanted to do was to um, ex expound upon that concept um, in order to to provide you with how to time the loop so that it runs the same on all computers <coughs> so what I wanted to do first of all was to uh, explain to you that first of all if we go back to our program this is our program from the code that we ran uh, previous uh, lessons ago this is our program where the ball moves according to the key presses up down um, left and right and um, on a quad core this is going to execute uh, extremely fast um, so that brings me to my next topic which is uh, controlling the speed of your game loop um, as I explained before um, the the speed is measured in frames um, frames per second and not everyone's computer uh, runs at the same speed because they have different processors um, for example I have a quad core and if um, you know someone else maybe has um, I don't know a core 2 duo or something then um, it's going to run a bit slower than a quad core because it has less computing power so for example if I were to take this same code and to run it on someone else's computer it would run um, slower while it runs faster on my system so what we do, what most uh, Allegro programmers tend to do um, upon first seeing this function is they see they use a function called rest and its parameter is um, the amount of time that the program uh, takes a rest in between it and the next instruction so 25 um, milliseconds it, uh, the rest parameter is specified in milliseconds so this would be 25 milliseconds this would be 30 milliseconds and so on and so forth so if I were to compile this and run it this way you see now the game runs much slower but the thing is um, the reason why rest doesn't is not a good way to control a, a game loop is because 30 milliseconds on my computer once again may not be 30 sec milliseconds to another computer so we need a way in order to delimit the speed of the game loop regardless of what system we're running it on and um, I have the um, the code written up what we what we're going to want to do is called a game loop regulation um, and we regulate the game loop but in terms of what Allegro provides is timers and what we are going to do is we're going to set up timers in order to uh, control the speed of our game loop so we're going to erase this code and we're also going to comment this entire program out and I'll tell you why here in a second so in, a north, in another source code that I've included in the project called main2.cpp um, I've written a full program that's equivalent to the previous except that it's controlled by Allegro timers and not by the rest function so what we have is a program written in order to um, make use of Allegro timer functions <coughs> excuse me so everything in general looks the same the initialization functions the uh, first thing that we need to that we come new to is install timer and th what a timer is in Allegro is it is a um, it's a system that keeps track of the syst of the program's global time um, block so for example if um, if I set up a timer to run at uh, I don't know 50 beats per second 
um, what it is is that the timer that I set up is going to execute a certain function so often so if I installed one time if I installed the timer module and I um, in initialized the timer with install int x what is going to happen is that that timer is going to execute this function this many times a second okay so where's the function increment core clock it's up here increment core clock and what this does is it simply increments um, a variable called core clock and what's going to happen is it's going to turn from 0 to 1 and then it's going to act as a regulation so I'm going to so we have a lot to go through so I'm going to go through it um, very slowly with you so first of all I told you what a timer was and Allegro can have up to 16 timers uh, at one time in one program running at, at one instance so in order to install a timer what we need to do um, I mean I'm sorry in order to initialize a timer what we need to do is first we need to um, call this function install int x and install int x essentially starts up an allegro timer to run a certain function at a certain frequency so for in this example the timer is set to execute increment core clock which is up here and it's set to execute it at 50 beats per second and what this means is that for every second that the program is running the timer will have um, executed the function 50 times or X amount of times whatever so if it was um, I don't know 30 uh, then for every second it will have executed 30 times um, so what, what uh, essentially what's happening here is that you're setting a time for, for increment core clock to be incremented so um, so why exactly are we using the core clock as a variable what, what are we doing here good question this is our new game loop and it runs at a constant speed and I'm gonna show you why in just a second I'm gonna uncom I'm, I'm going to uncomment this okay so I'm gonna go ahead and run this code and show you the effects of it okay so right now as this program stands this will run at the same speed on everyone's computer regardless of their uh, the speed of their CPU um, and I'm gonna go through the program and show you why here so what this is is this is a, a regulated game loop by the timer definition we'll go ahead and indent this while it's yeah well, I'm going to go ahead and say this that um, indentation is important is, vi is vitally important to the readability of your code um, um, I'm pretty sure when you learned your programming language you've heard of something called white space and white space is all of the unnecessary um, spaces that you have in between pieces of code so for example from this expression uh, from this expression to this expression is white space so I could go I could um, do this and it would work perfectly I could leave that there but that would be sort of silly because we couldn't read it that way that's why we have white spaces because it's something that the compiler doesn't care about but we do so we use that to our to our advantage by formatting the code in such a way that we can easily 
read it and so that others may be able to easily read it okay so when the code when the uh, when the com um, the compiler gets to this piece of code and the computer gets to this code it's the same exact thing the same while loop except um, it has some different modifications for example it has a w another while loop in here and I'm going to go ahead and tell you what that is right now so let's say that it's that right here so let's say that the escape key is not pressed okay so then it gets to here while core clock is more than zero um, so what's happening here is let's say that our core clock variable equals zero at the time um, so what's going to happen is that it's going to skip it because it's not more than zero it's equal to zero and so it's going to go ahead and draw everything as it is and that's good so what's going to happen is that we're still not pressing the escape key so it's going to jump right back up here to the same piece of code while not escape and it's still not pressed so what's going to happen is that by the time it gets here th our timer will have executed this function here and it was going to increment the core clock and it's going to increment it from zero to one so is zero more than uh, i'm sorry is m one more than zero yes so then it's going to go into this loop and it's going to say it's going to initialize a new f a new variable called old ticks and it's going to assign it the valuable the va the value of core clock which is one at that time so then it's going to go ahead and run the logic and then it's going to decrement core clock which should be one so then it's going to be zero so what's going to happen is that if old ticks which is one is less than or equal to core clock which is zero then that's um, that's good. What's going to happen is going to since all ticks is going to be one, and core clock is going to be zero. Then what's going to happen is that it's not going to execute this because one is not less than or equal to zero. So it's going to go ahead and go back and do uh, the logic again. And so what's going to happen is that it's going to say while core clock is more than zero, well it is more than zero because it's one so then it's going to drop out and do the drawing again and then it's going to go back and increment it so you see what's happening core clock is is sort of vibrating between zero and one here at a constant rate because the timer is doing it at a constant rate so what's going to happen is that the drawing and the logic is taking turns here you see just like in the game loop example is taking turns well what's going to happen this is we, we put this right here because what happens is that if the logic takes too long it's going to automatically break it and it's going to get out of this loop and it's going to draw whatever logic is set up so if logic is taking too long let's say we have like 500 checks to do in collision and it didn't make it in time then it's going to go ahead and skip it and draw it because we don't want to take too much time doing the logic than we do drawing we want to have equal time space so that's what's going to happen. Um, so right now we have a constant beats per second of 30. And that's what this is. The game is running at 30 frames a second. So the FPS is 30. Um, usually, typically it's 60. 60 frames a second. So see now we have smooth movement that is the smoothest movement um, pretty much um, I mean that's that's pretty good and this is gonna run the same speed on everyone's computer um, I mean you can go up more it's just you see now it's going uh, 70 I mean I'm sorry 80 and so but typically I like to keep it at 60 because that's a smooth um, that's, that's usually smooth. Most most common games now are capped at 60 FPS, so that's usually a good speed. So this is our this is our new modified game loop. So now it runs the same on all systems, and this is gone. We're not going to be using this anymore. Our old code is gone. We've now modified it. We're going to be using this new regulated speed. So I know you guys have have you know really absorbed a lot of information with timers and everything um, at, um, the variable that you use for the uh, actual time 
um, needs to be declared as volatile um, because if you if you know of C++ mo uh, keyword modifiers volatile is a variable whose memory uh, address and memory can't change um, and that's good because when we're when you know during normal execution variables get changed around all the time but volatile ensures that it doesn't get moved around and um, here's another macro end of function we need this in order to uh, um, again maintain cross compatibility with other systems so that's why you need that there also there is no colon at the end of end of function just like end of main no colon um, I'm sorry no semicolon um, so lock variable we need that function uh, again in order to lock the memory that core clock is residing in and as is functions because functions reside in memory too not just variables functions do all code resolve is resides in somewhere in memory and um, it gets moved around during execution so we want to prevent that from happening so as it stands this code is is uh, in perfect regulation with itself and um, it runs the same on all computers so we've we have accomplished our goal so that is good and um, that's timers and again you can have up to 16 of them so you could you maybe have one running the game and another running something else but you know as long as you have you know under 16 um, or equal to 16 it, then it's, it should be fine so now that we have that down in the next video well in the next video I want to cover game objects um, how to manage whole game objects you know like to manage their variables their information and how to render them on the screen with functions that you call we're going to be using classes and making use of object orientation um, to do that so tune in for the next tutorial uh, this is Messiah Fantasia signing out